one five solving inequalities you guys already know most of this instead of an equal sign it's going to be that alligator right the less than greater than whatever sign so um let's start with this we'll just start with what we have and we're going to add some stuff to the back here set builder notation uh, this one says x plus five is less than seven so obviously, if this said x plus 5 equals 7, you would just subtract 5 from both sides. So it's the same thing. You're still going to subtract 5 from either side and get 2. This says x is less than 2. To help you remember, less than looks like an L, um, so it's the less than sign. Okay. This says x such that x is less than 2. That is called set builder notation. What we're going to start doing this year is called interval notation. Um, I will get to that in just a second. Something I want you to add here. If you multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides of the inequality, what do you do? You switch the inequality, right? So if you multiply or divide by a negative number, on both sides, you have to do it to both sides of the inequality, you must switch the sign. For example, if this said like negative 2 here and I divided by negative 2 I would then switch this from a less than sign to a greater than sign. We'll have some examples like that in just a second if you need help with it. Um, where do I want to go next? Let's go ahead and go to the interval notation. This says x is less than 2. You guys know by now that if I was graphing that, I'm going to go ahead and put 2 in the middle. I'll put a 1 here and a 3 here. Would this be an open or a closed circle less than? That's going to be an open circle, and if it says x is less than 2, if the letter's on the left, you can just go whichever way the arrow's pointing, so it's pointing this way, or if we think about it, what's less than 2, a 1 or a 3? Well, 1's less than 2, right? So either way, I'm going to shade the left side of this. So you guys should already know that by now, okay? But the interval notation, you probably don't, this stuff right here. So just like this was an open circle and this is obviously a closed circle, we're going to have rules to that. Okay, so let me go ahead and go back to the open or closed circle. If it's less than or greater than, it's an open circle when you graph it on a number line. Okay, open circle. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's a closed circle. Okay, that should start coming back to you. Those are just rules, right? This one means not including, and this one's mean this one means including. So same thing. Um, if you have infinity, you can't be on infinity, so that's going to be a parentheses sign. Just like this is an open circle, you can't be on that number. It's a parentheses. And if you have this one, <clears throat> that's a closed circle, which means you can be on it. It's including the number, so that is the brackets. Okay. So like on this one, for example, I'm going to go ahead and do the number line and they'll come back. This is 2 again. So I've got a 1 and a 3. That's a closed circle. I'm going to shade to the right. Okay. To show you how to do these, I'm going to do it on the front here. Um, and then I'm going to go on the back. So let's see here. This, if you look at a number line, you're always reading it left to right. So if I go left to right, I've got negative infinity on the left side and infinity on the right side. So I'm going from negative infinity all the way up to 2. That's why it's negative infinity comma 2. Positive or negative infinity always gets parentheses. And then the 2 is an open circle, so I get a parentheses. On this one, this is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. So the first number on my graph isn't until 2. So I'm going from 2 to infinity. The 2 is a closed circle, so it gets a bracket. And the infinity is always an open circle, so the parentheses. Okay, before we even do any questions at all, um, let's write some things on the back. Okay, so go ahead and go to the back for this interval notation stuff. I feel like that was kind of quick, so let me show you a generic way to remember which one's which, okay? For right now, um, it's going to either be, let's do this one, it's going to be like x is less than or less than or equal to a number, 
if that happens, it's always going to be negative infinity to that number, and then it's going to be brackets or parentheses depending on what that is. So I'm going to put this or this. If I have x is greater than or greater than a number, greater than or equal to a number, okay, so it could be this or that, it doesn't matter, um, I'm going to say some number. You start with the number first, and then you're going to go to infinity. Infinity always gets parentheses. Since this one doesn't have a line, I'm going to put parentheses with it. I'm going to go back and with that line, I'm going to just change it to brackets. So that way you have an example of each. You guys see what I'm saying? This one's less than or equal to, so it gets a bracket. And this one's just greater than, so it gets parentheses. I will explain that better in class if you're not following interval notation. For right now, I don't grade you on that just yet. I let you practice for like a day or two, but by the test, you do have to get interval notation right to get full credit. Okay, so we got to start figuring that out here pretty soon. Um, so number one, here's an extra example. 1A, I guess, whatever. If I, I'm not going to give you a question, I'm just going to like jump to the answer because that's what we're learning. If I give you x is greater than negative 7, what we're going to do is we're going to graph it even though they're not asking us to. So like here's negative 7, negative 8, and negative 6. If I was back in Algebra 1, this would have been an open or a closed circle. That would be open, and would I shade the left or the right? I'm going to shade the right, so let me again explain that. That says x is greater than negative 7. Well, greater than negative 7 is more to the right. It's farther to the positives, okay? Or, as long as the letter's on the left, you can shade whichever way the arrow's pointing. This is pointing right, so you're going to shade right. So, what this is, is this guy, right? I'm going to start nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, here's the first thing I see. I see a negative 7. I'm going left to right. And then I'm going to infinity over here, because here's negative infinity and here's positive infinity. So infinity always gets what? Parentheses. This negative 7, there's no hard, sharp line, so I don't want a hard, sharp line. This is my parentheses. So negative, inf negative 7, comma, infinity. Let's try another one. x is greater than or equal to 22. The first thing we're going to do is just graph it. Eventually you won't have to graph it anymore because you'll just kind of know what to do. But I think for right now it's really helpful to see it and then be like, oh, that's why it's the answer. So would this be open or closed? That's closed, left or right, right. Okay. Here's my negative infinity. Here's my negatives. Obviously farther down, but it's on the left side. And my positive infinity is on the right side. So if I go left to right, I'm not shading the negative infinity side. I'm not shading until 22. And then I'm going to positive infinity. Infinity always gets parentheses. What's the 22 going to get? Brackets or, infin or, or parentheses? It's going to get brackets. Okay? It's a hard, sharp line, so you do a hard, sharp line. Or go back to the rules from the front. Okay? Let's try one more. This is a tricky one. Zero is greater than y. A lot of the time, people are used to seeing the variable on the left side, so I'm going to switch places. I'm not actually doing any math. I'm literally just moving it from the right to the left and the left to the right. So the alligator is eating the zero the first time, so the alligator is still eating the zero. So this one says y is less than zero. Okay, I think most people do it better when they have it with the letter on the left. So that would be an open circle shaded left. These are my negative infinities. This is my positive infinity side. The first thing that's shaded if I'm going left to right is negative infinity. And then I go all the way up to zero. Infinity gets parentheses. This is an open circle parentheses. Okay? If interval notation is really freaking you out, we've got a couple more examples, but you can obviously ask me in class and I can maybe break it down a little bit better. All right? Back to the front. Solve. Use both notations and graph the thing. So whenever you're solving these, you can basically pretend it's an equal sign. Unless you multiply or divide by a negative on both sides, it's really the same thing. So with 4x minus 15 is less than or equal to 21, I have to get x alone. So the 21 is a constant. Bring his buddy over. You're going to add the 15, right? So 4x is less than or equal to what's 21 plus 15? 36, right? We're going to divide by 4 on both sides, and x is less than or equal to 
9. I'm going to go ahead and graph it and then do the notation. So this is one of my answers. If you want to get super fancy and use the set builder notation, which is technically what they're asking us to do, it's x such that x is less than or equal to 9. I'm fine if you leave it this way because obviously this is essentially the same thing, but the interval notation you really do need to focus on. So let's go ahead and graph it. I'm going to put the number I care about in the middle, the 9 goes here, and then I just go left and right of it by 1, and that's really good enough for me. Is that open or closed? If you've forgotten, we've got it right up here, right? So in my, the way I explain it is if that has something extra, you do something extra. So that's a closed circle on 9, and then you shade left because everything less than 9 is like the 8 side, right? Or it's pointing left, so you shade left. So when we do our interval notation, I'm going to fill in the infinities, okay? Going left to right, I start with negative infinity, and I stop at 9. Infinity always gets parentheses. This is less than or equal to, so it gets a bracket. Negative infinity, comma, 9. Number 17, I want you to go ahead and try and solve for z and just kind of wait for me, and then we'll graph it and stuff together. Try to get z alone really quickly. Pause the video, get z alone. All right, so what we're going to do is add 14 to both sides. So negative 6z is greater than what's negative 32 plus 14. That's negative 18. I'm divided, dividing by a negative on both sides, so I have to switch my sign. It was greater than, now it's less than. Two negatives make a positive, so I get z is less than 3. Okay? I'm going to put 3 here, 2, 4. Is that open or closed? It's going to be an open circle, left or right, left. So why don't you try to put that in interval notation really quickly. Look at your other examples and see if it's going to be negative infinity comma number or number comma infinity. So this is going to be negative infinity comma number. Negative infinity to 3. Infinities always get parentheses. Is the 3 an open or closed circle? So it's going to get parentheses. Okay? Last one. Jin is selling ad space in Central City Magazine. Jin earns 3% commission for every ad he sells, plus a salary of $250 a week. If the average amount of an ad is $500, how many ads must he sell to make at least $700 per week? Define a variable, write an inequality, and solve. So, we have to write our own inequality and figure it out on our own. All right? No matter what, how much is Jin going to make a week? If you have to read it again, you can blah, 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 blah. He gets 250 a week. So no matter what, we're starting out with 250 bucks, period, just for showing up to work, right? If he's getting 3% commission, 3% is 0 0.03, okay? And then the ads of how many ads he sells. If the ads are worth 500 bucks, depending on how many he sells, it's $500 per ad, so that's multiplication. And he needs at least $700. So I'm trying to figure out what should go here. If this needs to be $700 or more, that's greater than or equal to. Okay, so one more time. He's earning $250 bucks plus commission, so more, right? So it's a plus sign. 3% as a decimal is 0 .03. $500 per magazine is 500 times X, depending on how many magazines he sells. And he wants $700 or more, so this has to be greater than or equal to 700 bucks. Okay? So if we just go ahead and simplify that down, um, I ended up subtracting 250 from both sides first. So 0 .03 times 500X is greater than or equal to 450. And then multiply these two numbers together, and you get 15X greater than or equal to 450. Divide by 15 on both sides. X is greater than or equal to 30. So that means he needs to sell at least 30 ads to make the amount of money he was hoping for. Okay? If you have any questions, make a note on the notes for me, and I can help you with that in class.